So sitting here in the lab, um, see if I can change this position and get a better, better lighting view in here. All right. So now, how y'all doing? Sitting here in the lab, and I'm just thinking about a few things, and um, just wanted to put some ideas in the air. I don't have nothing particular I want to talk about, but I do want to touch on a couple of topics. One of the topics I wanted to touch on was um, the structure of politics, religion, economics, and overall society is set up in a manner that the chains of slavery can pop like that. One of the problems that we have in is the people in place drag their feet. Now, I was getting a lot of flack saying that I wasn't moving fast enough and I wasn't doing my part fast enough and I, they wanted me to make certain moves. Some stuff that they don't understand is it has to be done openly and in the public. People have to see it because they have to know what they're capable of. And if they don't see in real time certain things take place, then people won't never know that they're capable of attaining higher heights within the self. So um, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting on these people to do their part. Now, they all know I unraveled the riddle. I read the unreadable book. I got the work to show the work. Because with your PhD, you have to show the work. And um, nothing. You started off on a good foot. I'm about to make some stuff happen. So at this point, my options is this. I can continue the way to go rogue. Me, being who I am and moving how I move, I'm more inclined to go rogue and just do this shit my way. But I guarantee you that won't be pretty. <clears throat> so at this point, we say, where do we go from here? All these people um, about to be suffering for nothing. So I put a post up on my, my background, and it's showing y'all that the time, I mean, we can get out of this. It's over. But it seemed like people prefer to be in the position to complain about the condition as opposed to being in the position to change the condition. So I'm sitting here. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm trying not to, you know, uh, do nothing rash, because if I'm forced to have to do this on my own without the structure that I set in place because people dragging their feet, then I'm going to do it the worst possible way I could think of make the worst possible impression on the world that I can come up with and shock the conscience of everybody who's dragging their fucking feet. So here you got somebody that been did all these years of labor and toil to try to break everybody from the oppression and then all of the people they say they masters, they raised and passed, they got the answers and the solutions and they got stuff set in place. The structure there. The structure there. Now remember, I told y'all a long time ago that right now, the problem is the conscious community. All these conscious motherfuckers in the way. Um... 
I'm looking here in case I got questions so I can go through here. All right. So the conscious motherfuckers, the ones in the way, the ones who post to say, okay, somebody passed the test. Somebody broke the lock on the chains of hell. All I got to do is find other conscious people and just say, hey, let's bury the hatchet on the bullshit and let's get on the ball. And it, boom, it's over with. The Negro, I'm using that deliberately and intentionally because when I say Negro or nigger, what I mean is a mental slave, a manufactured psychological drone created through a prisoner of war camp that was designed to keep you ignorant and oppressed forever. So I didn't did it, right? I came in. I walk the underbellies of society, you know. Um, I hobnob with all of the what they call undesirable elements, the crackheads, the dope fiends, the winos, you know. I walk with the gangbangers, the thugs, the drug dealers, the pimps, the hustlers, and I've been through the churches, the mosques, synagogue. I'd have been inside of all of their materials. Um, so they not going to run the game because I'm not going to buy it first and foremost. But now it's to the point now where people are unnecessarily suffering. People unnecessarily suffering. Now we all know that in order to hold on to power, these devils will literally kill themselves before they get a power up. But the chief devil already then told them he's ready to go. He don't want to be here no more. But all of the conscious Negroes, these motherfuckers that say they're aware, they God bodies, they gods. They ain't doing no God shit, but they swear they gods. Um. If they was gods, then we wouldn't still be oppressed. Y'all got to remember that. Not saying that they don't have the potential to become a god, but if they was a realized god, then we wouldn't be oppressed. There wouldn't be no more oppression on earth if they feel like they say they feel and they can do the stuff that a god do, then the oppression is easy. See, the thing about power is, I did a video about a week ago called power unused is the same as being powerless black people got the power to change the world by doing three little simple steps three simple steps you don't gotta go kill nothing you don't gotta blow nothing up you don't have to uh strap on no c4 and run up in no worst case scenario the worst thing you had to do is take your ball and go home people don't like to hear that People don't like to hear that they can stop being oppressed just by stop supporting the oppressor. You know, so everybody want to, uh, what they say in the movie, uh, Mark for Death, uh, Screwface say, everybody want heaven, nobody want dead. Everybody want to be free, but don't nobody want to do no work. They want it to be handed to them on a silver platter, dressed up with all this shiny shit on it. Hey, here's your freedom that you didn't earn, that you don't want to work for. You want somebody to just give it to you. There's an old saying, freedom ain't free. Believe that. You got to pay for freedom with the cost of whatever it is that the world around you believe in going exactly opposite to the paradigm. In order to break oppression, in order to get from under the psychological slavery, you have to not support it right so now if i drop a fuck bomb on here right you got the self-righteous people on here that be like oh i can't tolerate that language his language is so rude the thing they don't understand about language is this if you be politically correct while you oppress that means that you are supporting the oppression by being politically correct what do it mean to be politically correct it means that you are following everything correctly according to the political standard that the oppressor gave you. Fuck the oppressor. 
Fuck where he come from. Fuck the horse he rode in on, you know, and fuck everybody that's supporting. How's that for politically correct? Fuck them bastards up there selling out the Constitution and the people on a daily basis while y'all sitting here looking for somebody to do something for you when you don't want to do nothing for yourself. The conscious Negroes is the problem. These so-called aware motherfuckers, the ones that like to call everybody out on their bullshit, but then they got to put their motherfucking face in their lap when they get called on their bullshit. Call me on my bullshit. I don't give a fuck because I've done a lot of dirt. And I didn't, I didn't pay for a lot of dirt. I didn't pay for dirt other motherfuckers did, right? So you got to keep in mind to be politically correct in the face of injustice is to support the injustice by claiming it's correct. If you are politically correct, you are supporting the injustice. Fuck the injustice and fuck the motherfuckers that purvey it. You can't be politically correct. You can't avoid using the most hostile terminologies, dialect, and language at your disposal in order to express your dis, um, satisfaction with the status quo. As long as you're trying to work within the confines of an oppressed system, you are walking down um, a gated road. Either side you turn, you blocked. you blocking yourself trying to be politically correct. So... Fuck being politically correct. They can kiss my ass and the horse they rode in on too. So when you want to find a way out, <clears throat> um, the number one thing that you have to understand is power is in numbers, but not in the numbers like gangbangers that can't fight by themselves. It's an agreement and it's not of submission. So this is where people get fucked up at. The religions tell you to submit, bow down to a God that ain't doing shit for you. They God is a punk. They God, as my man would like to say, is a wimp. Ain't that right, Zo? God is a wimp. What do I mean when I say God is? First, you don't even know who God is. So I'm going to tell y'all this, and then I'm going to go into who God is. If your arm's too short to box with God, how the fuck you think they're long enough to box with Rod? So God, right, is a three-letter word, G-O-D in English. Grimm's Law Grammar say during translation. All vowels are interchangeable. So what are the vowels? A, E, I, O, and U. Sometimes Y, but Y is a later addition to the vowel family because it's confusing as to whether it's a consonant or a vowel. So we focus on the five main vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Grimm's Law Grammar, translation. All vowels are interchangeable. Now let me find my good book because, you know, we black folks love a good book, even if we don't know what it is. Oh, it's around here somewhere. Might be hiding from me. Because I'll be spanking that sucker. I'll be giving the good book a spanking sometimes, and you don't like it. Here we go. All right. So now, um, where was I going with that? Let me look in here and see if I got any questions. These conscious Negroes, the ones that's aware in the know, so to speak, they sit here and tell us all these games, right? They put down past leaders that try their best being raised in a society that teaches them to be a derelict. The society and the structure of this American society is specifically designed to allow the people to self-oppress. Police yourself. Oppress yourself. Right? And I'm trying to remember what verse I wanted to pull out of the good book. You know, because we love that book. Um, we know we don't know where it came from. I told y'all once before 
that the Holy Bible, um, the Helios Biblios, mean it came from Egypt. Now, I'm gonna give y'all some references to look. Y'all don't know how to match the Egyptian um, metal netter hieroglyphics to the biblical text so you can understand that it's stolen legacy. Um, George James said, they stole it and you must return it. And I told him, I don't want to return it. Fuck them and fuck what they stole. I start over. And Chancellor Williams told me, look, you got it all laid out for you now. We did our part. Now you do your part. So I did my part. So I listened to all my elders, Chancellor Williams, Carter G. Woodson, W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Mega Evers, Stokely Carmichael, H. Rap Brown, Huey Newton, Bobby Seale. I ain't even got to the sisters yet. I'm still going down to brothers. I listened to Larry Hoover, Jeff Ford, Stan Tukey Williams. Oh, Governor, I'm coming for your punk ass. I don't give a fuck if you 199. You killed my soldier on some bullshit. I'm coming for your governor ass. I don't give a fuck if you in a wheelchair park. I'm kicking your ass over. Y'all tell this tell Schwarzenegger I said that. Tell him this the reincarnated Stan Tukey Williams, and I'm gonna be knocking on his door whenever these people get this shit straight, just to kick his old ass down. I don't give a fuck if he ever get back up. I'm kicking him right in his fucking face. Y'all mark my words. If I ever get foot distance from him, he catching a boot to the face. And that's on Crip. That's on Crip. Watch what I say. Now, <clears throat> I listen to Big Shug. I listen to Tupac and Jay-Z. I listen to Puffy. I listen to Farrakhan. I listen to... um uh. Father Allah, Clarence 13X. I listen to Prince Cuba. I listen to all of the Moors from the traitors to the ones that's trying to get the secrets out of the temple back into the right domain. Now, I did my fucking part. And these Negroes still want to drag their feet. They still want to remain stuck in the dirt, oppressed. I talked to my Latin folks, my Latin counts, my Latin kings. I talked to all of them, the MS-13s. I talked to the bikers, the Hells Angels, and all of those motherfuckers with the iron horses. They know who they is, and they all waiting on these Negroes to get off their ass and do something. So, do I go rogue? I'm going to tell y'all this. Y'all don't want me to go rogue. Because if I go rogue, it's just going to make shit real bad real fast. See, because as soon as I nut up, earth nut up. So now you know why I got to be more patient than everybody out of the 8.4 billion people. I got to be the most patient motherfucker so we don't all destroy each other. And out of the 8.4 billion, I have to be the one that give the most fuck out of everybody. That's kind of hard because I got a very low give a fuck meter. And then... So these conscious motherfuckers, the ones that's in the way, they want to launch these attacks against each other on social media, showing the enemy where you're weak. You're going to make sure the enemy know where you're weak at so that you can never get from under the oppression. Because as long as he know where to hit you at, guess where he's going to hit you? Right where you told him you was weak at. He's not going to never play into your strengths. The one that oppress you not going to never play into your strength. He'll always play to your weakness because you are uncovered on your flank. That's military terminology for those who don't understand. Your flank is left wide open. So now you march in a war march, right? And half of your contingent is unprotected because you motherfuckers can't work together. But y'all want me to be politically correct. Kiss my ass. So you got masters that's raised in past, masters that's faked in past. You got 
um muftis you have shriners you have religious leaders misleading the people on purpose they lying to y'all on purpose and i'm here to tell you if them motherfuckers can't see this shit in plain fucking sight they lying to you on purpose or they some fucking fools that don't need to be in front of you in the first place they lying when they tell you caesar borgia is in here he ain't in here if they tell you Serapis in here, he ain't in here either. This was before all them motherfuckers was even born on earth. Wasn't none of them born yet. And so when you see these books, this, this African history and African conjure that's been stripped down, concealed, and twisted because they want to keep you confused. And as long as you confuse and as long as you fighting each other, as long as you confuse and fighting each other, you can't escape an oppressor. You can't escape a bear trap while you fighting a lion in front of you. So you're foot in the bear trap and you keep attacking the goddamn lion that's trying to get you out. So this is how we look to the oppressor. He looking at a juggernaut that he beating upside the head with a cotton or a bag of cotton. And he laughing like a motherfucker that the juggernaut won't get up and defend himself. It's funny to them. And y'all the ones crying, we need a we need a savior, a redeemer, or when God gonna stop this pain and suffering. God didn't then stop it. He stopped it on June the 22nd, 2019, when the chains of hell was broke. That's when he stopped it. But y'all won't let the devil go because y'all like this devil shit. I'm be wondering who the real problem. Yeah, wounded animal. Goddamn right. Bag a motherfucker in the corner and they're going to come out. See, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm just watching this shit like a TV show. And I'm watching all the way from the beginning of the show. I'm like, I feel like black people watching white people in a scary movie talking about, Becky, why did you fall down? Get your ass up and run. Don't you know the monster coming? But only I'm not telling that to a white lady in the movie. I'm telling that to these niggas in the, in the world, all over the place. You got the power, but you're not using it. You might as well go and give it up. You got all you got to do is a couple of things. You don't have to you don't have to cause World War Four because we already fighting World War Three right now, and y'all too stupid to see it. We in the middle of World War Three. Silent weapons, quiet war. William Cooper told y'all about it in ninety one. Silent weapons, quiet war. It's in all of the government paperwork that y'all too lazy to read. And then when I read it and tell you what's in it, you tell me I'm crazy. The government can't do that. The government not going to do that. They would never do that. Yep, and they would never allow syphilis to run uh, unchecked through the black community. And they would never shoot black people in the back uh, unarmed while they arrest without incident mass murderers. That's not going to happen because our government's not going to do that. Our government wouldn't do that. Um. Your government would never be in the biggest drug traders in the world. Not the U.S. government. They wouldn't do that. No matter what Iran-Contra said, no matter what the paperwork in the DEA archive reveals, no matter what your special forces in Afghanistan right now, as I speak, guarding opium poppies may say, this government not going to be no drug dealers. They're not going to be the biggest drug dealers in the world. Is not going to be the U.S. government to fund black ops and black ops operations. No, they wouldn't do that. Not my government. America's the greatest country in the world. Don't you know that? It might be. It might be the greatest wicked motherfucker in the world. But I'm going to tell you all this. I don't have no problem with the structure. I don't have no problem with the people. My problem come with the oppressor 
and his oppression. And the biggest problem come with the powerful accepting being in the powerless position. Now that part right there. The powerless being in a power the powerful being in a powerless position is retarded to me. That's retarded. You the most powerful motherfucker ever lived, and you sitting around like a, a, a handicapped infant. All this fucking power. All this fucking power. And they know it. That's what makes it funny to them because all you got to do is say, hey, let me show you. Let me show you where the power lies. Let me show you who is the power. Let me show you the way. And once I do that, get the fuck out my way because I step on your ass too. But no, nope, we don't want to do that. We want to cry that we need a savior, that God is in us and we God. All this, what I call masturbation mentality ass shit, make you feel good, ain't going to produce nothing. So, um, I can start setting this shit up myself because I am the master builder, the master of masters, the self-raised master. So don't think I can't build this shit from the ground up myself and assemble the team. I'm already working behind the scenes, assembling the team in order to show a proper structure of a family. But you motherfuckers I ain't, don't want none of that real shit. See... When you understand how the oppressor work, then you know why these motherfuckers scared. But there's one motherfucker that the oppressor work for. Because there's only one motherfucker that was going to break the chains of hell. By breaking the chains of hell, he was going to get the right to command both the armies of heaven and hell. Armies of heaven and hell as above so below motherfucker only one motherfucker that bad one command the armies of heaven. I mean, what do that mean that mean motherfucker i could be the devil or i can be god that's what it mean it mean that if a motherfucker don't understand how the game is played how do the fuck you expect to win So here we go, talking all this kind of shit. I can recite verses from the Quran because I'm high feeds. I know the whole book, cover to cover, word for word, I'm high feeds now. But it ain't changing shit in the world. I don't give a fuck what you memorize, catalog, categorize, organize, synthesize, mesmerize or any other eyes you want to put on it. It does not matter if it's not going to free you. And if you're not going to free your mind, how the fuck are you going to free your body? It's not possible. If your mind is imprisoned, then your body is going to be doubly imprisoned because you're going to be imprisoned internally and externally. Internally and externally. Let's deal with the I mean, the unknown God. Amen is the unknown God. I'm the I-10. I'm not the Amen. I'm the known one. I'm the master of masters, the self-raised masters, the I-10. The Amen is the unknown one. He the one that didn't want you to know who he was because then when you launch your attack against his motherfucking ass, he have a hard stay here because he don't give a fuck about you. He don't give a fuck about you, don't want to be here, didn't want to come here. But because his uncle, Enlil, decided to make that move for the throne, war in heaven, and tried to oust the queen of heaven and earth, knowing that he ain't had a right, and aroused the anger of the galactic council that put us under a restricted quarantine zone, they needed a motherfucker that was effective as me at getting this motherfucking punishment carried out, isolating the war that was going on. The war never stopped. The war in heaven spilled onto the earth read the gita krishna is telling arjuna it's in the blood the war the spiritual warfare has been being fought in the blood 
in the blood. The spiritual warfare is in the blood and it spills out into the realm of the physical reality. The whole fucking goal is to silence your evil ancestors in your mind so that the righteous ones can outshine them evil motherfuckers because you got both of them in you. The more science put it this way, man is truth and falsehood strangely mixed. Now, Moore's know what I'm talking about. Um, they got another saying is uh, man um, finds himself where he solves his problems best. Me, I like to switch it around. Man solves his problems best where he finds himself. All these are keys. All these are keys. These are the way to show you like how to figure some shit out. I'm going to give you an example in my book of, in, in the book of death before I was hiring. Now on the cover of this, you will see this lady pointing up as above, so below scenario. So I'll put it up here. Now, Noble Drew Ali told the Moors, watch this. He say, sometimes you have to go around your elbow in order to get to your thumb. Think about that. That's not haphazardly quoted. What do, Sip? That's not a, a statement made in jest. It was to tell you something. So now, even though this is a woman, and he's going around the, let me get over here, the elbow, to get to the thumb. This is also, this lady's urn represents the trunk of the elephant in the upraised position. That's a sign. It's a sign. It represents the elephant's trunk. Her finger, this is the Indian elephant, by the way, because of the two. The two pinches is on the trunk of the elephant. That make it an Indian elephant. Remember, it's the uniting of Africa and Asia in the more science. This is an Indian elephant trunk because they got the two. Right? The two. Now, when you look at the difference in the elephants, you'll see what I'm talking about when you show it. So now it's telling me Ganesh. Ganesh. Because it's an Indian elephant. What does Ganesh mean? Ganesh is, is, um, gives the blessings through long-term memory. That means that the reward promised to us a long time ago that everybody else forget, Ganesh doesn't forget. That is the symbolism of Ganesh, one of the parts of it. It's also the bringer of bounty and um, blessings and all this stuff. When the trunk is in the upright position like this, it means uh, prosperity, the raising of prosperity. When the trunk is down, it means sorrow, sadness, and impending doom. So you're reading the signs right here by looking at this. Now, the elephant have to be found somewhere else in more science in order for my analogy to be correct. Noble Drew Ali said, y'all have to remember, the elephant is our friend. The fuck is he talking about? There's also another symbol of an elephant. And we call it the Republican Party. And what we don't know about our history is what you call the Confederate South was not the slave trading South. The slave trading was done by the Europeans from England. The English were the slave traders. Now, y'all ain't paying attention to y'all history books because y'all following the narrative they gave y'all. I'm going to bust the narrative right upside the head. Why is this? Okay. Now, when they told us that <clears throat> the North won the war against the South, the Confederate flag was the flag of slavery and the American flag was the flag of liberty. First and foremost, 
First and foremost, you need to know what is the purpose of a flag? A flag tells you where all of the ideologies embody in the area territory that this flag represent. This is the identity of this group. Now, go to Lerone Bennett um, before the Mayflower, um, forced in the glory, the Abraham Lincoln story, and look in the index for the US flag, and this is what you're gonna discover. More race riots, racial bigotry, racial hatred, racial lynchings, race riots all occurred under what they call old glory than ever occurred under the confederate flag the confederate south was under the articles of confederation which was your original constitution this is before the the corporation came and settled in and took control of the political body corporate they turned it in from a political body public to a political body corporate all that mean is they took it from being a sovereign territory into a company like Ford, Chrysler, GM, Microsoft. And then when they done that, they incorporated it so that everybody that lived within the confines of the lines of demarcation described by the, um, um, what they call it, they don't call it the constitution, the bylaws. Of the corporation um you govern by the bylaws of the corporation what are the bylaws you call it your united states code in your um um code of federal regulations these are your bylaws so when they tell you all law is commercial that means it's for sale i mean it's for trade how do we know it's for trade because that clerk holds a bond and until the bond is settled, the case cannot be resolved. Now, a, a lot of people, don't, this is rare in, in law, but it happens. Every now and then somebody posts a bond for a criminal act. And then they meet all of their requirements, but all of a sudden now they've been convicted of a crime and they got to go to prison, but they got to go back to court on a bond hearing. But it's not an appeal bond. It's not an appeal bond. The reason why they got to have a bond hearing because somebody messed up the paperwork. The bond is not settled with the conviction anyway. All of the conviction is, is a stage show where they draw in 12 people from their regular everyday lives to see who can trick them best, the prosecutor or the defender. Now the defender what we call a defense attorney is a bar member. And the prosecutor, what we call the prosecuting attorney, district attorney, is also a bar member. And the judge, who we call the judiciary or fiduciary, is a bar member. Immediate conflict of interest with anybody that's not a member of the bar. Immediately. That's an automatic con conflict of interest. You have three people representing the private corporation a brotherhood that swore their allegiance to the brotherhood um, to the same level. And now you have to go and allow one brother to fight the other brother in front of the father in order to determine if you're going to get justice. You're a goddamn fool. You're a goddamn fool. Inalienable rights mean you don't have to get a motherfucker shit. Your God-given inalienable rights. That means they can't be moved. They can't be removed. They can't be subjugated, abridged. Abridged means that they can't be altered, tampered with, reduced, shortened, conditions placed upon. So for y'all who don't understand, you don't understand legalese, all you got to do is show what I'm saying to an attorney and then look him in his face and say, all y'all bar members, he going to drop his head and say, yep automatic conflict of interest look you can even look it up in the law books where cases have been settled on conflict of interest on less less cases been settled on conflict of interest by less 
insane. Okay, let's go into the maritime. How did we get under maritime law, Mazel? We under maritime law, that's correct. It's called the Uniform Commercial Code or the Code of Thieves. You're absolutely correct. But you got to remember the Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, because if you don't know the history, you won't even, you can't prove we under maritime law if you don't know the history. How the hell we get under maritime law? When did it happen and who done it? When did we get under maritime law and who placed us under maritime law and how do you prove it? And, you know, you hear people saying that a lot. You hear the Moors keep telling you to proclaim your nationality. Let me tell you what these stupid motherfuckers telling y'all to do. They telling you, build this wicked, treacherous system up by padding the documents with your support. That's what you're proclaiming your nationality is. They telling you to escape the system, you have to dig deeper into the system in order to get out of it. You're a goddamn fool if you believe that. The whole judicial system is fraudulent. So to proclaim your nationality in a kangaroo court turns your ass into a kangaroo. Proclaim your nationality to who? Who got the authority to say you are or are not a particular nationality? How did they get the authority? Who gave it to them? Proclaim your nationality then. Go ahead. When the when the chips fall down, your nationality not gonna mean shit on the card. You're gonna have to be able to read your fucking DNA. You're gonna have to be able to tell us the struggles you went through that you overcame, where you came from, and how you got here. When you not that realize, you're not gonna make it. Because you stuck in this system, so you want to be part of the system. And all y'all that want to get caught up in the rapture is coming. But y'all don't know. Y'all about to be food for the gods. They're going to eat you motherfuckers like dinner. Because y'all think that the people that talk like me is crazy. That when we come here to uplift you motherfuckers and teach y'all and show y'all where the trap's at, that we insane and we don't know what the fuck we talking about. I done unraveled a judicial system. They medical system, they psychological system, they political system, they military system, they social system, the educational system. I done went through all of their philosophers, um, um, writers, poets, playwrights. I went through all that shit to get you motherfuckers out this shit. But y'all like it here. Y'all like a motherfucker to have a foot on your neck so that when you don't want to pull yourself up, when you don't want to raise yourself up, you got somebody to blame it on. You ain't got to take responsibility. The devil made me do it. No, the devil ain't going to make you do shit. Because he gone. He's sitting up. He over there in Saudi Arabia waiting on this motherfucking transport, but he can't leave. He can't leave. As long as y'all motherfuckers keep calling him. How in the hell are you calling every time you say a prayer and say amen? You calling this motherfucker back. But your church not going to tell you that because they don't even know what the fuck amen or I mean in Islam is behind the prayer. First of all, let me explain it to you so you understand. When you call on God, we just going into that. This is why I pulled up this book to begin with and I got a little sidetracked. You got 12 tribes of Israel, right? I'm going to show you where to look. And I told y'all that God um, was a Hebrew word. And according to Graham's Law of Grammar, that the Hebrew word, um, the vowels are interchangeable. Now, if you look, this is Genesis chapter 30, and right here with my finger at is verse 11. And 
Leah said, a troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. This is this right here. No, yeah. Right there. Camera, so you can see it. Gad, G A D. It's a tribe of Israel, and according to this, this this particular father is the son of Leah and Jacob. Jacob, Jacob and Leah had a son, and they named him Gad. And they said, "Behold, a troop. What's a troop? It's a military contingent." So now when you say God in the prayer, you actually are asking one of the tribes of Israel for absolution. When you're saying God and you're calling on God, you're calling on the patriarch of the tribe of Gad of the Israeli tribes. These 12 tribes are represented by 12 central banks. And you see Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Richmond, Atlanta, Chicago, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Kansas City, City, Dallas, and San Francisco. Now you look over here, you start seeing the dates. These are the dates that they became incorporated. The word incorporated means it became a company. They incorporated these banks, and each one of them represents one of the 13 tribes of Israel. You got 13 tribes because the the 13th tribe is the tribe of Israel itself. But the tribe of Israel is a matriarchal. Now, I'm going to show y'all in the book. One of the, one of the tribes of Israel is named after one of the daughters of Israel. Right? So when we go back to chapter 30, Chapter 30 gives you all of the names. Okay. I'm trying to find her name. So one of these tribes... They keep saying a son, a son, another son. I forget her name. I'm going to find it. But one of the 12 tribes or 13 tribes is a female. And the reason that is, is because the number 13 is the queen's number. It means the queen of the hive. And even though they not never telling you that Abraham, meaning the heart of the black God, and there's only one that was called the heart of God in the Egyptian book of the dead, and that was the queen of heaven and earth herself, Isis. She was called the heart of God. Now, when they say the heart of God in that context, the word, that they're saying is Ab uh, Ra Kim, which is the black God in his heart, or the heart of the black God, or um, it could also be translated um, as um, the heart that was wax black, or that was covered with blackness. Either way, the heart of God is Isis in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. You can anybody can look it up. It's not hard to find, but you got to know what you're looking for. You're right. That was the, uh, the agreement between the Moors and the colonists established what you call your Continental Congress. Right? So when they established the Continental Congress, okay, we're going to go to Dan in a minute. Because Dan literally means to judge. Dan means judge. So now you know the Judahites of the tribe of Dan set as judiciaries. You already know. They're telling you right there. It's not a secret. This shit is in plain sight. 
I'm not giving y'all no motherfucking earth shattering information. I'm just pointing out what you already know. Right. So now when you see the number 13, the number 13 is re represented in English by the second letter, the alphabet and the 13th letter, which is M. The M is um, for master or mason or Morpheus or mystic. The B is the queen B, B, 13th letter. The M is also for matriarch. So when you're looking at it, whether it's the 13th letter or the letter B, you can't escape the matriarchal expression of the 13 as the M, mother, mammary, matriarch, mammal, or the B, the hiving insect, the B. Being that it's directly named the same thing, that's the first thing that you notice is the bee being a matriarchal hive animal that's able to communicate um, using pheromones and telepathy and uh, sonogram in order to communicate. And so we sitting here and we watching all this in real time ignorance. We watching all these foolish people in real time. Now, the auto industry is the problem too because they are the backbone of the society um, in more ways than one because they are the magnifying glass for the working class. Meaning that whatever direction the auto workers end up going drags the rest of the workers around the country. Now we already know that the majority of people are what you call working class because only 1% or one tenth of one percent are actually the wealthy and the power wielders. So what that make the rest of us become working class and working middle class, working upper middle class. I mean, we got jobs. And if the worker, which is the backbone of a society, is is mistreated, um, then how can you expect the society to show any progress in the social structure? that oppresses the psychology of the people and keeps them in a constant state of struggle where they can never breathe the breath of life. So, um, I'm gonna go a couple more minutes because we almost had an hour. I'm gonna wrap this up about the hour mark unless I get some questions in the box that I, because I didn't really have nothing specific I wanted to touch on right i just wanted to get some stuff off my chest i'm gonna do a recap so I, I i got on i started off talking about the conscious community being the problem them niggas in the way now right now if i was to take charge like a joseph stalin or a mayo zadon the conscious niggas would be the first motherfuckers to line against the wall before the politicians lawyers and the judges all of the conscious niggas would be the first motherfuckers to go because they the first motherfucking barrier to freedom. So you get rid of the first barrier, which is them motherfuckers that's in the way, talking about they're here to help and everything they're doing is fucking the people's minds up worse. Um, That's the problem. I'm here for my people. And tear down every fucking thing your people did under oppression. You have no forgiveness in your heart you have no sense of unity in your mind. You only see opportunities to destroy one another, tear each other down, undermine the works of one another. And you expect a motherfucker to want to join forces with you rotten ass motherfuckers calling yourself conscious. You the motherfuckers in the way. You the motherfuckers need to be drugged behind a truck like Richard Bird. They drugged the wrong motherfucker. They need these conscious aware motherfuckers. All of these motherfuckers with the deep knowledge that's so goddamn deep that they can't have a conversation with an average person because the average person is an idiot in their mind, never knowing that the average person, the one that got your dumb ass in the quasi position of power, it ain't even real power. You pseudo powerful motherfuckers. You talking about you guys, but you don't do no God stuff. And you talk about um, the liberation of an oppressed people, but you do nothing of a liberation doctrine, theology, physiology, psychology. You do nothing that facilitates liberation. Nothing. Nothing. 
Now, one thing that you're doing is going to free you. I can tear down Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, uh, Martin Luther King. No, I can tear them all down for what? Tear down everything we built for what? What is it going to produce in the end? What you trying to make? What you trying to come up with? What's the effect? If you're a master, you've got to be trying to make an effect. What's the fucking effect you're trying to create? Tearing down everything you built, and then you leave the enemy structure in place. But you didn't even know you built that shit, too. So now, let's look at this a little deeper. Everybody know that, no, everybody don't know. This is not true. I just made a, a misstatement that everybody know. What would be nice for everybody to know is that the Oscars, the Grammys, and all of these award ceremonies was not created with black people in mind. Now you know why you couldn't win shit. It was not created with Hispanic people or Asian people in mind. You don't need that shit. You got fucking pyramids and sphinxes and shit all over the world. You don't need no goddamn Oscar or no Grammy. You walked with the gods. You was one of them until you f lost your fucking identity. Now you walking around in amnesia. You walking around in amnesia and swear you the smartest motherfucker because you got a PhD. Well, you full of it. And so, um, look, Money is a marker. It's a die mark in the water. That's why it's the mark of the beast. Pull out the good book again. How do you know money is the mark of the beast? It tell you right there when it tell you what the mark of the beast is. It tell you right there. Let me read it to you. And then I'm gonna put it in the screen, put it right in your face, so you can't deny it. Mm, I think that'll be chapter. Should be the second chapter. He who is wise, let him count the number. You know what? I'm going to put this down. I'm going to pull it up. Because I don't want to waste too much time on here. I'm almost to the end. Me too, uh, Denny. I got a GED. I'm I'm, I'm a self-educated fool. I'm going to switch over for a minute. I don't know if y'all can still see me, but I'm still here. I just had to go look for something right quick. Uh, the power of Google save a whole lot of time. Um, all right, so now as I look at this, it's Revelations chapter 19. You go to Revelations chapter 19. Let's see what it says. 18. Now remember, Supreme Mathematics is 19. And um, no, that's not it. That's not it. Let me let me jump for a minute, y'all. All right, let me try over here. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went 
second angel, third angel. All right, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a, a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So now you see the mark. But who got the mark? Um, let me see. So as you go on, 19, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. Now notice it say the image, you worship the image, and the image is separate from the mark. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The false prophet and the um and the beast. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceed out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Right? Now, um, that's still not telling me how to identify the mark. Let me try one more thing. See how we can identify the mark of the beast. Because you once you know what the mark is. Hold on. Okay, now we want to find out what this mark of the beast is. It got an identifier. All right, so we go in here, chapter 13, the Queen's chapter. This ain't matching up. Let me look what I'm missing. What am I missing? That's good. This is not planned, so that's the best part about not planning it. You get to do it in real time, and then people can see you make the fumbles and the mistakes and all that kind of stuff in order to get the right. All right, so now. This is what it tell you. Um, open his mouth, blasphemy against God. He was giving him. A, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Right? And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now, y'all know that's Tupac, right? 
And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. 40 and two months. That's a little less than four years. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy of God and was given him to make war to saints. Um, and he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Right? So now they're saying that it's a mark, but it's not the beast. It's just a mark. It's an identifier. And that no man might buy or sell, say he did had the money, I mean the mark, in the name of the beast or the number of his name, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. So the number of the beast is the same as the number of the man, the carbon atom. And his number is 603 score and six. Now, let's go back. You know, I told y'all money is the mark. Now, watch what it say. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, we all know right now the majority of people are right-handed. When you passing money or receiving money it's always your right hand out or you passing it with your right hand right so now and it said that no man might buy or sell without except him that had the mark or the money right money is the mark remember it's a die marker in the water of life it's showing you by following the money. What do they teach the police and police science? If you want to find the criminals, you follow the money trail. The money will always lead you back to the source. Because one thing you can't separate is a greedy motherfucker from his money. So the money got to go back because if it's all about the dollar, if the beast is relying upon the mark, the money, then the money has to be traceable back to the beast. I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, you got to understand that the mark is not the beast. The mark is an identifier to follow in order to determine who the beast is. Okay, now you know they can't buy or sell without the mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So if they ain't talking about getting the money, and if they're not exchanging the money, they thinking about the money. It's in their minds. It's in their forehead. Now, um, it say, and that no man might buy or sell, say he'd have had a mark or the name of the beast, money, or that's, that's the Pope, or the number of his name. Now, here's wisdom. Let him to understand count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. Now, I did not tell you that the mark or the number of the beast is 666 number it does not tell you his name gonna add up to 666 it don't tell you that but we always like ronald wilson reagan he got six letters in each one of the he the beast no he ain't the beast he was a puppet no man might buy or sell without this mark he who have wisdom let him count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man now they just identified a beast and a man having the same freaking number and his number is 603 scoring six so now they're telling you that the, the 600 
the three score and the six added together is the identifier to who the beast is. So now, why is it making this specifically this difference between the beast and the man? And that this number of a man is the same number of the beast to carry. It had to identify the gender. The gender had to be identified as the difference. The beast had to be a male, couldn't be a woman. They tell you that right here. And this is why they focus on the beast having the same number as a man. The age of majority is 18. It's a man. The woman's age of majority is 21, which is actually backwards. It's supposed to be the other way around. But in the patriarchal society, this is what we're dealing with. The woman actually matured before the man. 14-year-old girl is mentally uh, um, on the same level as a 22-year-old 20, dude. Um, but we don't want to accept or acknowledge that fact. When you see these little girls taking these old dudes for all their money. But he the motherfucking problem. He the motherfucking pariah. But she breaking his ass. Y'all not paying attention. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the mountain, Mount Sion, and with him, 144,000 having his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harps harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne. And so now let's analyze this money set, uh, situation. Now I told y'all that the number is the number of a man. It don't matter which, and it say, uh, what is it saying there? It says, it, this is going to give you another clue. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I shouldn't even be ripping the veil back like this. I'll, I'll, I'll open me and freely like this, but I don't give a fuck. Let's go back. Chapter 13, once again. And I'm going to show y'all something else. All right. And he calls if all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Him that have understanding, count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man. Now, look, if you really look at it, it's trickery involved in this verse. And I'm going to show you the trickery. Verse 18. Right? Here is wisdom. Let him have understanding. Count the number of the beast. You see that colon? You see the colon right there? Okay, now, that's like saying, and... That means we that's done. So the wise one can count the number of the beast, but then we need him to do something else. What does it say next? What does it say next? For it is the number of a man with another colon. That's a whole nother idea. Now watch this. There is no secret on the face of the bill. We know five dollars Abraham Lincoln. We know one dollar is George Washington. We know twenty dollars is Andrew Jackson. The number of a fucking man. This just so happened to be five. The nickel, the buffalo. This is called a buffalo note. This is not a dollar. The five, the increment of five is called a buffalo note. Find out what that is with the natives. It's a buffalo note. The origin of this and the reason it's called the buffalo note is because what we would consider $5 was the equivalent of a buffalo tail. You do the math. I'm just saying. Y'all don't know y'all history, so I got to try to tell y'all, sneak a little bit of it in and who you are and, and what and what you're from. The mark is the dollar. 
The mark is the dollar. You got that, India? The mark is the dollar. The number of the men is on each denomination. <laughs> okay, let me tell you what I mean. That's Tupac. Let me make sure there ain't no more questions before I get into that. India, I told you that's Tupac that looked like he was wounded. See, when you use this book, it's a formula to knowing who is who, what's what, what time it is, and where they at. I can tell you everything going on in the world using this same book that they stole from Egypt. Now, y'all got to keep, I got to keep saying, I can't say that enough. They stole this. The Babylonians, they got us all over here suffering, pretending to be white people, pushing white uh, supremacy as the tool of oppression. They look like us. They stole this. In Babylon, they put it out and supplemented it with Babylonian mysticism. So you find out all of your Kazarians, Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Zionists practice what they call Babylonian money magic. And they also take control of people using what they call gulam magic. Now they tell us that the gulam is a clay thing that is in is animated through incantation, but what they don't tell you is that's only part of it. The gulam looked just like a human made of clay. Wait a minute. It was somebody else made from dirt, clay, mud. Who was that? I think it's in the same book that they stole from Egypt. When Kansu was sitting there spinning that wheel, he made somebody. In the heaven and earth was finished and all the hosts of them and on the seventh day, God ended his work. Wait a minute. Okay, but so they didn't, God didn't even make man in the first seven days. Ain't that something we an afterthought? Because he rested before he made us. He must have needed a whole lot of rest to make some motherfuckers as fucked up as us because that had to be a lot of work. It's like, let me read this for y'all right here. Um, Every plant in the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. There went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. That means that water evaporated, formed into a cloud, and it rained. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, remember, right before this, it rained, so this is mud. This is mud. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's an incantation, a chant. And man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now notice it don't never say created. And the Lord God formed the man. He formed him from the dust of the ground. After it rained, so that means it had to be mud. Because it say, but there were, there went up a mist from the earth. Water evaporated and watered the whole face of the ground, meaning there was a, a global rain. The flood hadn't happened yet because Noah wasn't born, because Adam wasn't made. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. This wet dust is going to become what? Mud, right? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He walked up to him and he said an incantation, and he followed the incantation with a... You see it all the time in um, ceremonial rites of the shaman, so don't play dumb. And the man became a living soul, meaning that this clay thing became animated. It came alive. Remember uh, Mickenstein? It's alive! Same stuff. And the Lord God planted the garden, and he put the man in the garden. Now, I'm sitting here showing you all this stuff, and I sound probably like an idiot to a lot of people. I know what I'm talking about. 
All of the stuff is right there. Mazel, I'm I'm even anybody who won't break this motherfucking oppression shit because I'm just tired of it. I'm not participating in the system. Me and the system is done. I don't go to work no more. I don't go to the club. All I'm in, I'm either in the lab or I'm waiting on these motherfuckers to come read this book of life so we can get on with the festivities because I'm ready to get this shit over with. But like I say, these conscious niggas in the way. All these conscious motherfuckers, and I don't have no exception for none of them. If they're not talking unity doctrine, they in the goddamn way. Black people need to stop supporting motherfuckers tearing down other motherfuckers' shit. Because if you can't build what you trying to tear down, you in the goddamn way. I'm going to say that part again. If you're not capable of building the very institution you trying to destroy when we was not allowed to have any institutions, if you can't build that shit on your own like the founding father of that institution done, you in the goddamn way. In the goddamn way. So, while I'm sitting here waiting, in vain, it's felt like it's in vain for these motherfuckers to get off their hands, put their boots on, march their ass over here, get this goddamn book so we can get this shit on the way. I'm gonna go roll. I'm gonna do this shit the hardest, most miserable fucking way to make the most motherfuckers miserable I possibly can if I have to do it the hard way. I'm going to make sure I do the most fucked up shit I can possibly do. That's what I'm going to do. I don't want to do it that way, but if they're not going to do their part, then I might as well tear this shit up. I might as well rip this motherfucker from asshole to appetite. I mean, shit. I'm, I'm going to blow every motherfucker, no good motherfucker out of the water, and every motherfucker that's about the right thing can come on home. All them no good motherfuckers gonna get it though. Trust me. Okay, so now I didn't, I didn't surpass the hour mark, and I didn't got a whole lot of stuff off my chest. I'm a, um, I'm a lollygag for about five minutes here. So I'll see if I get any questions. Y'all want me to deal with any topics before I leave? Cause like I say, I'm. I'm a bad motherfucker. So if y'all got any questions, y'all might as well ask them while I'm here. Because it's gonna come a time where I don't know. All right, so let me let me put this out there. Um if there's some, some females out there, this is what we need to do. We need to create a female community and a children's community. Just separated from the mainstream society to teach the ritual of flipping the earth grid back to the right frequency. Only women are allowed to perform what they call the earth right because it's a feminine right. It's not for men. I know the entire structure, right? I know the entire structure for flipping the grid. It's not hard. And it don't require nobody to use no weapons. All it require is mitochondrial, love, and a whole bunch of celebrations and structure. And so when you look at all of the tribes around the world, all of the indigenous people, you'll notice they all have these dances, right? And um They all got these dances they do. I put a whole bunch of them up yesterday so you can see around the world. These dances are important, especially for the feminine gender. Women that don't dance are going to end up acting like men. They can't help it because 
um, the society we live in is geared to make one women become men in order to sustain the family. She has to be a man and a woman. She has to become androgynous. She had to be equally as strong as a man and equally as feminine as a woman. And the pressure that that creates in the inside of an individual normally causes for a miserable motherfucker. So to take the misery out of the equation automatically reestablishes heaven on earth. Now, any other sisters, and um, none of the divide and conquer is allowed in this paradigm. No divided conquer is allowed in the paradigm. Everybody is met on the same level of respect and respectability. And um, the only reason for the temporary isolation is to establish the original structure so that it can be viewed by visitors, onlookers, and whatever the case might be to see the correct structure. The correct structure um creates a torsion field around an area and it's a field of protection that we were um, denied from setting up because of the war and um had we will set it up before they flipped it before they flipped the grid and quarantined us with um, the dark night satellite because that's what holding us under the quarantine where your prayers have to stop in the, in the ozone layer so no psychic energy can escape what we call the ozone layer in order to get your prayers and meditations to break beyond that you have to astral travel you have to leave your physical form move up outside of the atmosphere then call in your god self through your crown chakra and galvanize your entire self that's what you have to do it's a process for it for the women to um, form a harmonious group of women, right, and perform what they call the earth rites, which is a series of dance steps and chants and instruments and an emotion all connected together to heal the planet. Women are being called in their own mind to do this. They know they're supposed to do it. They don't know how. The only reason they don't know how is because the Dark Knight satellite has an amnesia mechanism. They call it the Kingo effect or the sleep effect or the zombie effect. It's to keep you mentally, you are slightly confused to the point where you can't figure out the solution to the problem. India, you are you you about to be done with that shit anyway. Um, we are we already know what's up. What you say go both ways, Mazel. You said they go both ways. You know I'm up here talking. I can't keep track of the real time comments. How you doing, Divine Deity? All right, so now. When the women learn how to do the earth rites, then that's where we we do our spinoffs. Because you got to go to your doulas who have to teach the women again how to give birth to um, babies that ain't um, sociopathic and psychopathic in nature. So you need your doula sciences set up in order for the baby to start being recovered in the womb. Because you can teach the baby in the womb. This is already a proven fact. And that's why they keep um, inner city um, women struggling during pregnancy. So the mindset of the oppression and the struggle will already be established in the seed. And so um, at this point, um, if I was black people and I wanted to be free from the oppression and i don't want to go through all of these mass shootings that's about to come up that they're going to be trying to do to get y'all to go out in the streets and start tearing some shit up so they can declare martial law and civil war and all that shit so they can try to regain power stop supporting these divide and conquer ass motherfuckers 
Stop supporting the motherfuckers that support the oppression. They easy to identify because they always trying to test somebody else's shit down. I'm doing good, uh, Divine Ditty. I'm glad you came to see me. Uh, I'm going to teach India. I'm the, I'm the master. I'm supposed to teach the shit. I just got to get the, the, we just need a location. And what's up? Everybody know who the fuck I am. I'm going to, I just told you I got the structure. I know where all of the keys at to unlock the kingdom. Now, I'm trying not to go rogue because I'm supposed to do it a very specific way. It's set up that way. But we behind schedule and it's not on me. I'm doing every fucking thing I'm supposed to do. And these motherfuckers ain't doing their part. Um, so, um, from the doula, we got to go to what they call rites of passage, replaces what they call schools and education. Fuck that dumb shit. School, modern American, no child left behind ass education is specifically designed to slow down the thinking process of what they call the minority. If they can slow down your computer, this is what they basically doing. Well, India work like this. I can't directly teach the priestesses, but I have to have priestesses that's go-betweens. They go betweens. They like they like my staff of teachers. Like um, let's say Jillian, because she one of them. And um she's supposed to teach the women how um to tap into that inner divinity, bring it out to the surface, and then bounce it off each other in a circle so that they can all become unified and be a more powerful spiritual force. She already know all the information, and now all she need is the structure in the in the in the um, place to teach at, right? Then you got um, uh, a couple. Uh, let's say um, my girl Kefra, she teaches the Tai Chi, which is going to be a spinoff for that's going to be for all of the people in there, male and female, but um, the ones who are instructors. Those are the ones that I recruit. I'm recruiting instructors, teachers. Now, I got to give them the layout, right, and tell them what they're supposed to teach, but I can't tell them how to teach it. I can't tell them what to say to other women. I can't tell them um, um, about setting up the structure and the timing for the classes or any of that i could just give them the information and the references where they need in the correct structure it's up to the the women i give that information are instructors then they go out or they go into the group and they give their part and they do their part and when everybody do their part it's a layered build from this layered build then the the, the women under them being directly taught by women, right, are automatically in tune with each other. They're automatically in tune with each other. Now, you being, India, you being a Nuwabi, and it's a, a chapter that Malachi York talked about that only a woman can teach to a woman. No man can't teach that chapter. It's in Ezekiel. And um, this is one of those things. Like, I can only tell a woman so much about her yoni but it's up to another woman to make that final connection on the spirit level i can tell her all of the science aspect and i can tell you how the spirit science of